uh, it was, you know, the thought that since sin is deceitful, you don't always see it for what it is. And since it, uh, it, it's deceitful, it ends up hardening the heart a little bit at the time. And before you knew it, the heart is just in another place where it shouldn't be.
verses 7 through 19, just for the sake of clarity. So if you'll stand with us, <coughs> Hebrews chapter 3. And we'll begin at verse 7. Let's read responsibly. <coughs> Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, today if you will hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved? Uh, Forty years was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? together so, so we, we see, see that they, they could not enter, enter in because, because of unbelief. unbelief praise the lord now we're going to ask god's blessing father i ask you to bless and minister to us today the words that uh, you would have us to know we thank you for the body of christ thank you for the privilege that we all are enjoying coming together lord after so long a time thank you in jesus name amen, amen. god bless you you may be seated when i was reading this text here in my reading, verse um, 13 it says, But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. And it just struck my, it struck my mind in a very uh, significant way. And I begin to think about it. And, you know, sometimes when God want to open up things, he, he can do it quite easy. And uh, as I was thinking on that, the thought was that two things, sin is deceitful and sin hardens the heart. So, um, so I thought about that. I was thinking about, because sometimes, uh, you know, I don't know about you, sometimes... We don't always obey all that God give us. We understand that sometimes and for some strange reason, we don't fully obey. And um, so I was thinking on those lines, what can cause us not to fully obey? You know, there, um, sometimes we may pick and choose what we obey. Uh, you're not like that, but sometimes that does happen when we pick and choose. And, and so it was somewhere on those lines my thoughts were going and when I read that so it just kind of struck me so sin is deceitful and sin actually hardens the heart and when the heart is hardened a person is not as sensitive to the voice of the spirit as they would normally be. So then I was like, oh, wow, look at that. How, how, you know, when God is ready to open up something, you know, you read it before, but somehow it strikes you differently. So I got to thinking about uh, sometimes over the past few weeks and months how certain little things just bugged me more than they should. And I began to think, wait a minute, why is this happening? And as I was thinking about that, I, uh, it was, you know, the thought that since sin is deceitful, you don't always see it for what it is. And since it, uh, it, it's deceitful, it ends up hardening the heart a little bit at the time. And before you knew it, the heart is just in another place 
where it shouldn't be. And, uh, and then when God began to speak, we may hear him clear, but we don't treat it like he's speaking. And so that, that's, that's what was really dawning on me. And so then I began to talk to the Lord. I began to just uh, let him go through some areas where maybe I got frustrated or some, some areas in the past where I found myself uh, disliking it. And disliking it to the point where, you know, how it's not settled. You, you, you haven't adequately dealt with that thing you just and so uh you 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 still feel the presence of god see that's why sin is so deceitful you you still feel the presence of god god doesn't take his whole spirit from you know what i'm saying and so you still some many times you can hear from god so and and then you may be in worship service and so all of those things are pluses right and so it's easy to say, oh, yeah, you know, everything's well. But, but, but I'm talking now, uh, I hope you follow with me because I've got another couple of scriptures. But as I thought on that and really thought on that, I began to, a couple of things that he had asked me to do. And it wasn't that I didn't understand him. So I began to say, well, why haven't I done this? And that's where he said, you know, there are a lot of things that can make us dissatisfied. And you start putting a few of those together over a period of time, and your heart is not in the place that you think it is. Have God ever revealed anything to you and you thought, me? Is that really me? So, so the Bible says the heart is what? Deceitful. So the heart is deceitful and sin is deceitful. So you got that combination so that sometimes things can be happening and we're not where we should be. And, and, and I was thinking about how, you know, how, how the Lord, he speaks, you know, like years and years and years. He's speaking to us certain things. If we are hearing with our hearts and obeying, he's got to go on from that, right? And speak something else. So the logical conclusion is we probably are not listening like we should, right? And if we're not listening like we should, which means we are not as sensitive to God as we should be, that means somewhere sin has Slowly harden our hearts. So that's where that's 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 what the, the thoughts were. And so I'd be like, I, I begin to talk to the Lord, begin to just let him go through some things that subtly harden my heart, you know, some dislikes, some things that were unpleasant, some things that irked me, you know. And as I did, uh, he was so ready to meet me. I mean he was so so ready. It just looked like he was like, I've been waiting for you to just lay it all on the altar. You know what I'm saying? And uh, as I did, like I said, he was so quick to come in and just felt some healing come and just, just minister to me. So, um, so the writer says, uh, exhort one another daily. It's like, you're, uh, it's like the, the indication is like a person that is running a race, and he's running, he's running and running, and maybe he's close to the finish line, but he's tired and weary and exhausted. But uh, another one come along beside him and encourage him, you got to keep on, you're almost to the finish line. So that's, that's the, how that, what that word, that's what it means. It's like exhort one another daily, uh, you know, to do right, right? And uh, we're in time, crisis time now, so... Uh, I want to encourage you. You encourage somebody else. Let's keep our focus. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We still got to do what we have to do. Right? Yeah. No matter what's going on, we still have to do what we got to do. Yeah. Because at the, as, as people say at the end of the day, we stand before the Lord. Say, well, no, Lord, Corona, you know, it came in there and it just knocked out about a year of my life. So I, I, just, I, just, I, just, I just sat at home didn't do that. 
But there are people that you can reach by phone, right? Hallelujah. There are people that you can reach in prayer, right? There are all kinds of ways to minister, but, but the works of God and the will of God must continue. And uh, so, uh, but this, 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 this struck me and, uh, as I go on. But he said, take heed lest there be in you an evil heart of unbelief. So he's putting, uh, connecting unbelief with an evil heart. And it's all encompassing. Um, kind of meaning turning aside from God. So unbelief abandons God, makes one abandon God and rebel against him. The whole argument dealt with here is that the, uh, if they would abandon uh, their belief in the son, this is what he was talking about here in, in, in Hebrews, you know the background of Hebrews, how he was admonishing them, some was turning back, getting ready to turn back. But he said, admonishing one another daily, the, the, the tendency to turn back was so strong until he really asked them to admonish one another daily. But as I thought on that and was really thinking on it more, and as I just began to repent before the Lord, there's some things that God asked me to do. I've done a lot of things that he asked me to do, but there's some things that I haven't done that I know he told me to do. But you're not like that, but I'm trying to get a point across. What pleases God is faith. And when you have faith, you obey. Right? All right. So, uh, so as I was thinking about this, this is the thought that came to my mind. We were riding along afterward. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercies. So what do you mean by that? Okay. You know the story of Jonah, right? This is what Jonah said after chapter 1 talks about Jonah was called to go to Nineveh. And Jonah did not want to do it. Anybody ever felt that way? He didn't want to do it. And so he decides that I'm going to Tasha. <laughs> I'm going somewhere else. As though he could flee from the presence of God. So he caught the ship and you know the story. He got, went to Tasha. And then, so they got on the ship, the boat. And a storm came up. And they were fighting for their lives. Can I tell you something? When we don't obey, we jeopardize somebody else. So it's not always about us, right? So they, their, all their lives were in danger because Jonah was fleeing from the presence of God. And so God allowed the wind to come. And then as he allowed the wind to come, then um, they began to conclude, okay, there's, it's like a curse after us here. Somebody is, somebody is, 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 is not right with their God. So they had everybody to cry out to their God. And so John was back there sleeping. What are you doing sleeping? Get up. Cry unto your God. Don't you see we're in trouble? So John said, well, I, I, I know why this is happening. He said, uh, they said who are you? Where you, what's your, you know, what's your nationality? Where you come from? Oh, I'm, I'm a Hebrew. I'm, uh, you know, I, 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 I serve the God of Heaven and the earth and the sea. So then they got really trouble. Like, what in the world? Who is this? And so he said, I, I tell you how can, you can stop this problem. If the Lord is angry with me because I'm running, I'm running from him. I, he asked me to do something and I didn't do it. So I'm running from him. But if you throw me overboard, then, then all this will cease. And um, so they looked at it like, no, I don't believe all that. So they just started fighting real hard, trying to see if they could bring the ship to the land and so on. But after it, it got worse. Then at the last, they drew a conclusion that, well, let's just throw them overboard, see what happens. When they threw them overboard, there was a great calm. But God wasn't ready to destroy Jonah's life. He had already prepared a whale or fish, right? 
So the fish grabbed him up, and you know the story, and so on. And he went down to the depths of hell. He said the bars of the earth and all that kind of stuff. He was talking about the weeds or around his head. And, but then, at his wit's end, he cried out unto God. And as he cried out unto God, God heard his cry. And it was after he had done this that he had this to say. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. What was he saying? He was like, uh, uh, there's no Jonas here. But the point was, is being made is that Jonah fled. He thought he could flee from the presence of God. He thought he could get away with not obeying the Lord. He thought he could get away with, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really need him in my life. And it cost him a lot. Lying vanities, one way to say it is they that observe worthless idols forsake their own mercies. There was mercy for God and there's mercy for you and I every day that God sends. And we have an obligation from the Lord to obey him, right? When it's all said and done, as I said earlier, it is the will of God that's necessary. How many know that you're walking in the will of God right now? Don't want to see your hands. But we should know when we're walking in the will of God. It's very important that we know and walk in the will of God, right? Because if, uh, uh, um, because we don't want to allow ourselves to be at the end of the day finding out that we didn't, and we stand before God. So Jonah, there he was, and he had this to say for you and I: if we observe lying vanities or worthless idols, things that we put before the Lord, right? When we put things before the Lord, we're actually trying to outsmart God. We seem like we know more than God. And, but when we obey the Lord, this is the greatest safety. That is the greatest good that can happen. He thought he could escape the call of God. He thought he could uh, better his lot. He thought he could live independently from God. And... Um, but he found out that we can't make it without God. We can't make it without God. God is for us. God cares for us. You know, an unpopular subject is sin, right? It's, it's unpopular because, you know, we, no one likes to do self-examination. But I, li- I worked in a retail store one time. And as I worked in a retail store... Every year we had to do inventory. Somebody say inventory. It means we had to find out what we had. And sometimes I found out that there was stuff that I had that should have been gone. There was stuff that I had that was tying up my open to spin. So I had to get rid of it or sell it or do something, mark it down. And after dealing with that adequately then uh, and knowing what I had, it made a change. And our lives are like that. We have to always take inventory of our lives. Always. We never want to assume that everything is well with us. God's presence does not operate based on how well we're doing. He's a God of grace, right? And since he's a God of grace... Sometimes it's hard to measure where we really are by the presence of God, right? And, um, uh, but I'm just, I want you to think about that. And so I was really uh, uh, taken back to a certain degree, and then God began to minister to me in a very significant way. And I began to confess and repent for the things that slowly harden my heart. 
And as they begin to slowly harden my heart, you drift away from that keen sensitivity. You still hear from God, right? But you move away from that keen sensitivity. And, uh, and uh, so it, it was, it, it was a really a good point of attention for me. And uh, so as he went on further to talk about Jonah, it further reiterated the point. So God cares for us today. And I know we're living in this age of grace. And it's, it, is, it is important that we know the difference between law and grace. And I won't get into that. But I want, because this is, I think, is, is sort of what I was on, pressed upon my heart. And so as, as I was sitting there in the seat, the, the thought came to me to do this. To ask who want the will of God for your life now. Not tomorrow, not six months, but who wants his will now? Who wants to walk hand in hand with God now? It's important. God, as we walk with God, there, there are things that do happen to us now, they will not happen. Or God can make it better. He can make it work for us. And, uh, but it is the will of God. Whosoever, whoso do the will of God will abide forever, right? Will abide forever. Now, I'm not, the message is not uh, one like it was last week. Because this is one a more or less where in the midst of what we're going through, we want to focus on God's will. What does God want? As I was, as I was, uh, while we were out these two months, I began to say, well, Lord, I want to make sure that when we come together, we're not just walking in tradition and just, and not serving God's purpose. You know, that's crucial, you know, and, 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 and I'm, as, as a leader, I ask God, God, you, Deal with my heart. Give me a heart for the will of God, for lost souls to set captives free. This, this is what pleases God. And uh, I, I don't want to be guilty of just going through the motion. You know what I'm saying? I can go to a movie theater on a Sunday if I'm not going to serve God's purpose, right? 